Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Bit Digital Live Corporate Webinar. This is Will Mays from RB Milestone. New York based Bit Digital is one of the few select publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies and is traded on the NASDAQ under the symbol BTBT. Joining us today is the company's CEO, Brian Bullitt, who is going to go through, his, through Bit Digital's investor presentation. This will include an overview of current operations, recent achievements, and upcoming milestones. At the end of the presentation, we'll be opening it up for Q&A for Brian to address. If you're interested in asking a question and are logged into Zoom or on a web platform, you can submit your questions directly over the Q&A module. Please note that this presentation is being recorded today, Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022 and will soon be made available on the company's website at bit-digital.com. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Brian Bullitt, Chief Executive Officer of Bit Digital. Brian, take it away. Thank you, Will. Uh, thanks everyone for joining the webinar. I'm Brian Bullitt, I'm CEO of Bit Digital. Uh, we're gonna go through uh, this, uh, some, some information about the company. Uh, and for those that are less familiar with uh, the business of mining, uh, what we do is provide a service to the Bitcoin network. The service we provide is verification of transactions. Uh, that in Bitcoin is done in a decentralized fashion through the maintenance of the underlying blockchain. Uh, that's what miners do. And uh, the mining computer, computer community, which is a distributed network of computers uh, that are decentralized, also contributed to the security of the network uh, through its decentralization. And miners compete to receive uh, their pro rata share of rewards from the network in exchange for contributing to solving a block. Uh, and that's how we earn our revenues. Our revenues are sourced in the form of Bitcoins. Um, so that's what we do. And if we turn to um, slide four, um, we're gonna go through uh, a bit about the history and the story and narrative about this company. Uh, we are uh, a bit differentiated in a number of ways that we think give us some unique strategic advantages in the Bitcoin mining business, uh, and we're going to go through them. Uh, but just to set the table on slide four, uh, there are some here are some key statistics about the company. Uh, the scale of the operations uh, is quite large. Uh, we have uh, 37,744 individual mining computers. Um, of that, 27,744 are currently owned today and 10,000 are subject to a forward purchase agreement that is expected to begin delivering in March and uh, just over a month's time. Um, that, give, that gets us to 2.6 exahash, exahash being the key measure of a fleet's computing power. Um, that currently owned fleet, uh, which represents 1.6 of the 2.6, uh, is a very respectable scale and, and among the largest in the public list, publicly listed mining sector today in terms of a currently owned fleet. Um, while others have um, advertised um, large expected future fleets based on um, expected procurement in the future, uh, you know, we, we continue to be among the largest in terms of the currently owned fleet. Uh, we have a, an approach to deploying our capital uh, that we believe is designed to deliver the strongest possible return on invested capital. Uh, we do that by focusing our capital resources primarily on Bit Bitcoin mining assets and the economics of Bitcoin mining itself, um, as opposed to allocating significant capital to ownership of data centers, uh, real estate, uh, and power. Um, although we do strategically have some allocation to data centers, uh, we primarily focus on the returns of Bitcoin mining itself, and we believe that's what our investor base uh, would like us to do. Uh, but that being said, we have a, a somewhat nuanced hybrid strategy uh, to the way we approach um, our, our securing uh, data center access, and we'll talk about that. It's another point of differentiation. We're a growth-oriented company. Um, we have uh, some pretty unique channels that we use to solve for some of the barriers to entry in this business, notably procuring the ASICs or the mining computers themselves, uh, which people are probably aware are in very short supply, and we have a unique way to get at them. 
And um, importantly, I'll mention that we are a company that's very focused on sustainability. Uh, we've taken a real leadership role and have been quite vocal in that in trying to chart a path for the industry uh, at large to move towards a decarbonization in the, in the future. And we're well along that path. And uh, folks may be aware we were one of the companies that uh, recently uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren reached out to for uh, some information regarding our sustainability. And we're uh, very excited to engage in that dialogue with uh, members of Congress. We'll, we'll touch a bit more on that later. And uh, lastly, we have a we have a fantastic team. I, I feel very blessed to work with some very talented individuals across all the verticals of the business and, and all aspects of the business. Uh, Will, we can go to the next slide. So uh, the last uh, the, the last point on the prior slide you know, bears a, a little bit of elaboration. You can see here that to date, as of as of the third quarter, we had mined over 3000 bitcoins since inception, and that's more than any of the peers, uh, the well known peers that appear on this slide. How did we do that? Well, we had a bit of a head start as opposed to some others. Uh, we got started in the business uh, quite early, and I'll take I'll take you through a little bit of the narrative because it's it, we have a, a unique heritage uh, that gives us some unique advantages. If we go to the next slide. BitDigital uh, entered the mining business in early February 2020. Uh, that was uh, before many of our peers got involved. Uh, that gave us a bit of a head start. The business was originally formed to operate in China, and uh, some of our co-founders that continue to be members of our team were veterans of the Chinese mining community, and they brought that expertise, capabilities, and relationships to the company. And we're able to use that and leverage those capabilities to scale very rapidly during the course of 2020 and through early 2021. That being said, there was always a vision that this is a business that requires significant capital investment and scale is important. And the way to get access to the deepest and uh, broadest capital market on the planet is through a NASDAQ listed entity. And in order to do that, one needs to operate in the US. And because of that thought process in October of 2020, uh, about a year and a half ago now, the company undertook a strategic decision to migrate its operations to North America. And if you look at our historical reporting, you will see that quarter by quarter, we had been reporting progress in doing that. Uh, as people are, are generally aware, in June of 2021, the Chinese government decided to ban the practice of Bitcoin mining. The bad news is that we did still have some operations in China at that point in time. The good news is that we were well along the path of migrating to North America. We already had the logistics and the hosting relationships in place to facilitate that. And we merely accelerated a process that was already in place for almost a year at that point in time. And I'm happy to say that during the third quarter of 21, uh, we, were, we, we migrated 100% of our operating assets out of China and they are now 100% on North American soil and are in the process of being redeployed at our data, data, data center facilities in North America. So we're now an American company and against that backdrop, uh, we have built out our US operations and built out the depth of our team headquartered here in New York. Uh, my joining the company early last year was a part, it was in part to facilitate that transition and I'm joined by some other talented individuals and um, happy to say that that transition is largely uh, in the rearview mirror. And now in 2022, going forward, we're positioned for rapid growth. If we can go to the next slide, Will, please. So as I mentioned, mining as a company, as a, as a business that has some very significant barriers to entry, and those barriers are primarily in procurement of ASICs, um, and also procurement of power, uh, the key input to Bitcoin mining being electricity. Um, we have a differentiated approach to procuring ASICs, uh, ASICs being the specialized computers that make up the network. Um, as people are aware, there is a global shortage of semiconductors that's particularly acute in the supply of mining specific chips. And as a result, it's very difficult to get one's hands on them. Um, it's a tight market. There are only there are only a handful of suppliers, really two of note. Um, and 
by and large, there are two channels to procure ASICs. One is to approach one of the manufacturers and place an order. And by and large, that's what most of the listed sector does to procure their fleet. And Will, if we can go to the next slide, we have an illustration of that. The negative of buying direct from the manufacturer is that the lead times because of that supply shortage are minimum six months and can extend to a year. And in the interim, the manufacturer requires a significant capital deposit. That capital sits idle during that time one is waiting for delivery of that order. There is also uncertainty about whether that order will be filled at the end of the term. And in some cases, there's uncertainty about pricing because these are not always fixed price contracts. You know, in a business where one is managing for the optimal capital velocity and return on invested capital, that drag on time is not your friend. Um, and one would want all else being equal, a shorter amount of time to get, get one's hands on the equipment and get it productive. The other channel is the spot market. The spot market has the benefit that when one purchases in the spot market, one takes possession immediately. And then it's just a matter of shipping the machines to one site and getting them on the racks and deployed. That shortens that timeline and all else being equal would suggest a greater velocity of capital and a greater return on invested capital. Bit Digital by and large since inception has almost entirely bought spot with one exception, which I'll talk about. Um, but we have done that because of those, in, those unique dynamics of the spot market and because our heritage and, and our team members have access to the relationships one needs to source equipment on the spot market. The spot market primarily takes place in Asia. Uh, it's transacted primarily in Mandarin. Uh, it's a tight knit community and one has to ac have access to the players and also have the knowledge to know who are reputable counterparties to deal with. Uh, we have that capability um, on our team and we have purchased almost our entire fleet. Everything we own today, in fact, um, was purchased spot. And we believe that capability is going to serve us very well going forward. Um, pretty much every company would probably do this if they could. The reason others don't is because they don't have those relationships and they don't have access to that market, at least not that we're aware of. So this is a unique uh, strate strategic advantage that we think is going to serve us, particularly as our hosting portfolio rolls on over the coming months and starts delivering power. It gives us the ability to match deliveries of ASICs to that power lighting up over time. And that's probably a good segue to the next slide. Will, if you could turn the page. You know, next, I'll take talk a bit about our, our approach to hosting. So as, as I mentioned, we're primarily a, a capital light infrastructure light model. Uh, if people follow the industry, you'll be aware that there are different schools of thought. Um, there's a school of thought that one should only allocate their capital to Bitcoin miners, and that's going to deliver the best return on capital. And then there's an alternative school of thought that one should allocate their capital primarily to data center infrastructure and power. We don't think it's an either or. We think that's a bit of a false binarism. Um, that being said, we have primarily allocated to miners because we like the economics of miners as opposed to owning real estate. But again, power and data center access is the lifeblood of the industry. It is a key input. Therefore, one needs to have secure access to it. We've solved for that by partnering in with some strategic partnerships uh, with a few groups that give us access not only to a secure pipeline of, of power um, and room for growth, uh, but also the ability to source more power over time. Um, and we'll talk a bit of, in more detail about some of the unique aspects of our hosting relationships. Uh, today, we have, uh, we have sites in Nebraska, Texas, Georgia, um, upstate New York, and we also have some exposure to Canada. Um, and going forward, we think that's going to continue to serve us very well. If we turn the page to the next slide, uh, this shows some of the key partners we work with. Um, Foundry USA is the pooling partner we use. Uh, this is the institutional grade Bitcoin mining pool that was set up by DCG Digital Currencies Group, which is the sponsor of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Foundry was established by 
by DCG really is a service to the North American mining community, and it provides a, a, a high quality pooling partner, uh, and they are our pool. The other names on this slide are, are well known data center providers that we work with. The last one, Block Fusion, is a deal that we announced uh, in late August of last year. Uh, this was an unusual deal that we sourced off market through some existing relationships. Block Fusion is a private company that owns and operates data centers uh, for Bitcoin mining. And notably, they are operating a facility in upstate New York that is run um, almost entirely on carbon free energy. It is in Niagara Falls, New York. Uh, it is about five miles from the Niagara River and runs on the clean hydrocarbon uh, that is generated by the nearby Robert Moses hydroelectric plant, which is the fourth largest hydro facility in the United States, I believe. Um, one of the largest, certainly. Um, and that gives us access to clean power. Um, and we have been able to do this um, across this hosting portfolio. We've been able to secure a pipeline of power at a very attractive cost. Our base power cost is 3.6 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, that's a, a very respectable figure. Um, that's a, a fully weighted or weighted average figure uh, pro forma for the full rollout of our hosting portfolio um, on a forward looking basis. And that gives us a fair amount of downside protection in terms of the economics of Bitcoin mining. Um, having a lower cost of power, all else being equal, suggests that one can continue to mine and operate profitably in a lower Bitcoin price environment. And we like having that margin of safety. And one way that we help align our partners with us and achieve such a low cost of power is by providing profit shares to many of our hosting partners. We like that structure because it gets our data center hosting partners um, aligned with maintaining 100% uptime for our fleet and maximizing uh, the revenue generation of the fleet. If we can go to the next slide, we have an illustration of our portfolio of power. We have been very successful in securing access to a pipeline of power that is sufficient not only to account for the full redeployment of our current fleet and announced purchases, but also provides us with a pathway for additional growth. As you can see on the left hand side, the dark green bars at the bottom of the chart totaling 122 megawatts that represents the power consumption of our currently owned fleet and what we've contracted to purchase. The 84 megawatts at the top of the bars represents power that we've contracted to provide for growth. And as you can see from the illustration on the right hand side, just using some simple math, assuming one fills that 84 megawatts with current generation equipment, that gets us to a pro forma future hash rate of 5.4 exahash, which is a very respectable fleet size in today's environment. So we have that path, path, path for growth in place. And as I mentioned, our strategy to fill that additional power as it comes online will be a combination of spot purchases and possibly to a lesser degree, some forward purchases uh, from the manufacturers. We did execute our first forward purchase. Uh, we did that in October of last year. Um, the reason we did that was really driven in part by this timeline of our hosting power rolling on over time. We were able to strike a deal with Bitmain, the leading manufacturer, for a delivery of equipment that delivers beginning in March of this year. And the timing of those deliveries is matched very neatly in time to the lighting up of power in this forward hosting portfolio. So that was a good reason to do it. It was also a good way to deploy the proceeds of an institutional private placement we had just done. Uh, we raised uh, $80 million of gross proceeds and we were able to deploy uh, the majority of that within one week's time um, by signing that contract. So it was a very efficient way to get that capital to work. Well, if we, uh, we can go to the next slide now. So, um, the portfolio that we've secured for hosting has um, been able to deliver to us um, a, a power profile that, that's, uh, that's very clean. And once we have this entire power portfolio built out, uh, we estimate we will be running on roughly two thirds 
renewable or carbon free power across that portfolio. Um, and our target is to ultimately get to 100%. And in order to signal that commitment, we became a signatory to the Crypto Climate Accord. Uh, that is a, an agreement that's modeled on the Paris Climate Accord. It's a commitment to reach net zero carbon emissions by the year 2030. Uh, we believe we are well positioned to, if, if, not, if not beat that, uh, we think we'll likely beat that, but certainly meet that goal in time. Um, we've also taken some other steps, uh, some of which are symbolic and some of which are real um, uh, and tangible. Um, but we're also members of the Bitcoin Mining Council. Uh, that's an industry body that was um, formed in part by Michael Saylor's efforts to bring the mining community together um, around issues such as sustainability to share best practices. We also were the first listed miner we are aware of to engage an independent third party ESG or environmental, social and governance um, advisor um, a consultant, a consultancy. It's called Apex, and uh, they help us benchmark our operations and set targets uh, to improve going forward against our sustainability and other goals um, on metrics that are important to the institutional investor community. Um, and I touched on our block fusion site, which uh, you can see from the thumbnails on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, that and other of our sites have actually been featured in some recent uh, media profiles by Bloomberg, uh, the Wall Street Journal, uh, NBC recently put out uh, a nice profile of that facility. Um, and so it's, uh, it's, it's been well received by the media as well. So we, why do we do all of this? Well, we, we believe it's the right thing to do for the planet to decarbonize our operations. We also believe that it's the right thing to do as fiduciaries because increasingly institutional investors have an ESG mandate and a focus on ESG targets. And to attract uh, ESG focused investors, one has to uh, surface these types of metrics and, and actually do the work to meet, meet these targets. And, and so we're doing all of the above. Um, and I guess uh, I'll just close this slide by mentioning that, you know, that as I, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we were on a, we're one of the six mining companies um, that, that were reported to have received an inquiry from Senator Warren and some of her fellow members of Congress. And uh, we, uh, we did put out a press release noting that, that we had responded to the inquiry, um, signaling that we are enthusiastic to engage in that dialogue uh, and look forward to providing uh, detailed responses uh, to uh, the members' uh, inquiry. Uh, if we could go to the next slide, please, Will. So um, this is a, a pro forma um, illustration of uh, just given that our fleet has been um, in transition and we recognize that uh, it, uh, that being the case, uh, there has been some uh, less clarity about what the possible um, income generating capacity of that fleet uh, might be because of the um, uh, the sort of non comparable nature of the of the last couple of quarters that were uh, that that saw some revenue declines as a result of miners being offline and in transit and as I mentioned that redeployment is in process uh, we do believe uh, that the full redeployment will be if not a Q1 event, an early Q2 event of this year, and we know that will that uh, that will be able to give investors a lot more clarity. Uh, in the interim, we've provided this pro forma analysis, and uh, as you can see, uh, it's a hypothetical illustration that states that uh, just doing the very simple math that if our full fleet were um, were uh, deployed as of this moment, as against a Bitcoin price of say forty thousand dollars per Bitcoin, uh, that implies 12, a little over 12 Bitcoins per day based on the current total network hash rate or 367 Bitcoin per month. And you can see that that translates to an annualized revenue figure of 176 million and a projected non-gap non -gap income from operations figure of just over 100 million per year. Uh, so that's, that's one way to frame uh, the opportunity set uh, with some, some numbers and, and a pro forma. And I think that's probably a good stopping point uh, to turn to the Q&A, Will.
Great. Thank you very much, Brian, for a very insightful and thorough presentation. Uh, as Brian said, we're going to move to the Q&A portion of the webinar. And if you're interested in asking a question uh, and you're logged into the Zoom app or on a web platform, you can submit your questions directly through the Q&A module. Uh, we have had some uh, pre-submitted uh, questions prior, so why don't we just get started with a few of those. And a few of these uh, you, you did address uh, during your presentation, Brian, but it might give us a chance to flush it out a little bit more. The first question that, that came in is, uh, how is BitDigital differentiated from other Bitcoin mining companies? Sure, I did touch on that, but you know, just to recap, it's, it's really, uh, there's really a couple of, of key areas where we have differentiated capabilities. One is the strategy for procuring mining computers or ASICs. And as I mentioned, we have the benefit of having access to two channels as opposed to the traditional one channel. Uh, we have access to the spot market and we have a track record of having procured uh, really the entirety of our currently owned fleet through that channel. And that's something that we're not aware of another company that has done that. And we believe that's going to continue to serve us going forward. Um, you know, I, I'll just elaborate a little more on that. Um, you know, we have we have been asked recently um, about about the spot market dynamics. Uh, it's not a market where one can just uh, uh, you know look up on a website and, and see uh, see prices and volumes. Uh, it, it is a bit opaque. Uh, one has to to be involved in it and know the participants um, to you know get price discovery. Um, and it, the question has come up: What do volumes look like now? Um, you know, naturally volumes spiked up pretty dramatically after the China banned mining. And a lot of the uh, you know, former Chinese operators were looking to off offload equipment rapidly. And that, that drove uh, pricing down to pretty attractive levels. We, we picked up a little bit of equipment in that time frame. A lot of that excess volume has been absorbed uh, since last June, but we do still continue to see healthy volumes and interesting pricing. It's something we monitor uh, on a regular basis. Uh, and, um, you know, frankly, I, I've been somewhat surprised that the volumes have remained as robust as we've seen and the opportunities as, as interesting as we've seen. Um, but, but on the other hand, it's not that surprising because the spot market has always existed. It wasn't merely an artifact of the China ban. Um, and, and we think it will continue to exist. It's made up of uh, you know, a, a lot of different types of, of players and market participants. Um, uh, and um, you know, we continue to see interesting volumes and, and opportunities there. Uh, the, the last bit of the answer to the question is, you know, as I mentioned before, our approach to hosting has been to uh, primarily go asset light, but secure access to the capabilities to source uh, new power opportunities and to develop data centers through relationships uh, with our hosting partners, such as Block Fusion, uh, who we work with very closely on identifying uh, new site opportunities and, and and build out potential. Great, thanks. And I, that, that kind of leads into one of the other questions that were submitted. You know, you had talked about uh, some of um, how BitDigital has uh, some unique relationships and that, that enables you to um, you have unique insights into the market, the spot market, et cetera. Um, you know, one of the questions here is, you know, how do you go about attracting top talent you know, service pro providers and partners, and, you know, how do you develop those relationships? And maybe you could talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. Um, it's a good question. I haven't received that question before, but but it's it's something that um, is obviously a focus, especially given the tight light labor market we find ourselves in. Um, we've found to our, um, you know, to we've, we've been happy to find that we have, uh, that that candidates that we speak with are um, are very excited about the opportunity to work with Bit Digital. You know, we're headquartered in New York City. It's the you know finance capital of the country, or the, some say the world. And there's a lot of talent here. Um, a lot of folks that have been trained in the traditional financial sector, uh, you know, not not unlike myself, um, who see an opportunity uh, to transition into this this new economy, this new future. Um, of finance uh, that's represented by Bitcoin and, and crypto more broadly. And uh, so, you know, one of one of the first hires that I made, actually the first hire that I made upon joining the company um, was a senior, um, a senior 
um, audit manager uh, who we were successful uh, poaching away from Ernst and Young, um, and uh, and and since then we we've continued to have success sourcing talent from the traditional finance market um, for for finance oriented roles, um, and in terms of service providers, which I think was the other part of your question, you know a lot of that's just through relationships uh, that are enjoyed by myself and my colleagues um, that you know predate our involvement with bit digital uh, block fusion is an example of that um, you know a, uh, an individual on our team um, our chief strategy officer Sam Tabar who I believe is on the call as well um, and he, he knew the principles of block fusion for a decade um, and was able to uh, you know identify an opportunity to work together and, and naturally that there's good chemistry there. We've also up tiered some of our professional service providers. We, rec we recently brought um, a, a new law firm as, as co-counsel for our uh, corporate counsel. Uh, that's Sullivan and Cromwell, one of the uh, top tier uh, Wall Street law firms uh, is now, is now co-corporate counsel. And, and, that, and that journey continues to really just raise the profile of the company and, and all of the service providers associated with it. Fantastic. Thanks. And the, uh, you know, the, the, the last question that I see here really is uh, uh, you, you, it's, you've talked about your sort of journey in, in the, what some are calling the great hashtag migration. And, and maybe you could just talk about some of the experiences you've had in that and maybe lessons learned. Sure. The, the great hash rate migration. <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah, it has been quite a journey. Um, I, I will say uh, it, it's not every day that one is asked to, um, physically move the entire operating base of a company halfway across the planet. Uh, you know, it is that it that was a logistical challenge, and um, I think a unique one um, that that probably few people uh, get to face in their career. I, I think one of the learnings from that is that our team really has the know-how and the capabilities to pull off something of that magnitude and, and to do it successfully. Um, you know, everything from the logistics aspect of it, you know, navigating the shipping corridors against the backdrop of COVID and and the tightening of of, um, of logistics channels, we were still able to get that done. Um, sourcing uh, commercial contracts to secure the power to light up that fleet once it got to U.S. soil, you know, just all of it was a, you know, a really um, intense uh, exercise. And and I think one of my key learnings was that. You know this company really is well positioned with 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 a talented team that, to pull off something of that magnitude, and and we we look forward to uh, in the near future being able to announce that the fleet is is fully redeployed in the U.S. and up and running and and giving that window of clarity to to our investors and stakeholders. Great. Well, thanks, Brian, and thanks everyone for joining today's webinar. Today's webinar recording will soon be made available on Bit Digital's website. And if you have any additional questions that have not been addressed on the webinar, please feel free to email us at uh, bitdigital at rbmilestone.com. Again, that's bitdigital at rbmilestone.com. Thanks again, and this concludes the webinar. Thanks, everyone, for joining.